Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. So we got a traffic there, and that's complete. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now it's Burrow. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A gain of six there on first. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. To the air again, Burrow. And it is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Stephon Diggs with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Bengals take it right down and score on the opening drive. Well, these guys scored touchdown after touchdown in that win a week ago. So how do they come out this week? Same way. They got that momentum going, a touchdown on the opening drive. I think it's safe to say that they're in a groove, isn't it? I mean, a lot of times we've seen where teams have scored a ton of points the week before. The very next week, struggle to score almost as if they used it all up. Not in this case. This group appears locked in. We're going to have to make some adjustments if you're on the other side of that football. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. How does the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away? This will be fielded inside the five. And it takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center. Their 6'4 quarterback. Well, we've hit that bittersweet week of the NFL season, haven't we? The last week of the regular season, week 17. Come on, Brandon. Can he win the MVP? Can, can he do it here in this last game? Well, he's got to make a strong impression here in the final week. It's an interesting race. My, my MVP ballot is at the top of my email right now, and I'm not voting until we've seen all the games here today. I like that. I respect a man that waits until the season is over, doesn't turn it in early. I think if he has a big game here and gets a little bit of help, maybe other guys don't play as well, he's got a great shot. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. 22 carries, 87 yards. One thing I do know, teams in the NFL don't treat this like a pitcher throwing the no-hitter. It's been mentioned all week long about going out and getting him the rushing title. He'll see the ball, and he'll see it often. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL, so when they're that high-powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20, because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score gives yourself, a, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Well, officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain on the play. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle? That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. It's a gain of four, and it's third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Horse to the ground and incomplete. 
Yeah, Brandon, we saw these defenders fly into the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. down. Here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. The Bengal offense on their way out as we look at the playoff race in the AFC. And it's all come down to this, hasn't it? Final week of the regular season. As this year's playoffs play out anything like the regular season is gone, could be in for a wild and fun month of January. And we can break the rules because we can look ahead. All right, there's not a coach out there that's ever said to their team, all right, let's look three, three weeks down the road. It's always right here, right now. Forget that. Think about what the playoffs are going to look like. The teams that we see that are already in, the teams that are trying to get in, we could have some great matchups. On second down, here's Mixon. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. It looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. Take it at the 37. An excellent return that time, 26 yards. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. The Browns offense heading out as we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. And you can see it's no race for the top spot. That's been decided. These guys will hope to get through week 17 in one piece before they host a division round game in two weeks time. And I think that what they'll do is they'll be very selective about who plays in this game. All right, There's certain guys that maybe are starters, but maybe haven't played as much as other guys during the year. Maybe they still need their timing back. Other guys, you're going to put bubble wrap and put them on the sidelines <laughs> until we'll see you in two weeks. The line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Second and Back to ten. throw now on second and ten. Second. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the ten to the seven. To Austin. That one goes for 30 yards. Well, so often now we're praising tight ends for their nimbleness and how they catch the ball downfield. But occasionally we get a reminder that tight ends They've got that tough guy aspect, too. How about him catching that short one there, shaking off tacklers, and turning that into an expansive gain downfield. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. 
And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Joe Mixon and the Bengal offense ready to go back to work. Last week, a strong showing, up over 100, also two trips to the end zone. It's the kind of week that if you said, listen, I'll let you have this type of a game each and every week, you'd sign up for it. You wouldn't try and get too greedy. But let's face it, good runners always want to be a little bit more greedy at the end, try and squeeze out every last yard. He's going to try and duplicate that and exceed it in this game. Denzel Warren. It's a pickup of three. Brings up on second down. Burrow. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation. That's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. And he comes back with one complete. 60 catches for him now on the year. This last one, a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. the shotgun, it's Burrow. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a first down on a gain of 10. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 47. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And now it's second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Brings up third down and nine. Here's Burrow. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. A.J. Epinesa in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Gearing up for another drive here, Austin Hooper trots back out. He's within shouting distance of a 1,000-yard season, but you read the local paper this morning. There was no talk of that mark. They interviewed him, and he wasn't talking about a 1,000 yards. The old cliche focused on this game. If he has a big one, might be able to get the win and the 1,000 yards. Seems like he just wants to let it come to him, right, as opposed to trying to force him. That's probably the right idea and the right attitude. So game situation, play calling will dictate things. Now, how does he get there once he tries to get hot? Formations, route running, trying to get mismatches for him, different types of routes he will run downfield, short, medium, long. All those things will come into play as he tries to get to that magical number. Seven seven, our score after one. Four time, seven to seven. Second down and eight. Now left 
left side, a completion to his tight end. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. A gain of 14. And the Browns first They'll try the draw now with Chubb. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. A lot of running backs, a little bit of a disadvantage when you start talking MVP. Might not be the case this year. You think he's got a shot, don't you? I do. I think he's got more than a shot. But what he's going to need here down the stretch this late in the season, he needs that big closing game, that game that we're all going to reflect on and go, oh, my goodness, did he put up a number, let's say 200-plus? So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking for Murphy, and he finds him complete. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Now they return to the ground game, Chubb. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. First and goal at the five-yard line. They'll run with Chubb. And well, the Browns are going to be set up with a first and goal. He couldn't quite reach the chalk but they'll have it at the one-yard line. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. And that's incomplete. You tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. They'll give it to Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb, his 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Browns have taken the lead. Well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off, as he does so with a touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Bengals take over first down 10 at their own 24-yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that. Maybe they get this game tied up. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nine brings up second and one. On second down now, Mixon. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Mixon. That's good for a Cincinnati. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Mixon. And shutting him off now open field. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That good for 19 of the first down. But they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going.
So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 41. Now Joe Mixon. And this time not quite to the 30. He'll be down at the 31-yard line. Now after that last play, there's a Bengal down on the field. And this is certainly not what you want to see in the final week of the year. We'll be back. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Now an option play on second down. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns 26. Five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Open man handler, that's complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Brings up second and a yard at the 17. Burrow throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. But remember, as they try to run the ball down here, Charles, this is the number two rush defense in the league. So do you accept the challenge up front? Do you get your offensive line together, get your tight end in the ball game, and say, I don't care that they're number two. Let's go ahead and show them that we can run the ball anyway. Or do you do the best thing and throw the darn thing and try and get in the end zone? Maybe that's wiser. And it's caught. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. The offense is going to stay out there. We'll see what the play call is. They need to find the right one here on fourth and goal. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Mac Nelson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. The Browns drive about to get started. Now their last two drives, both ending in touchdowns, it's gotten them this 14-7 lead. And it looks to me, and I think you're probably seeing the exact same thing, they're in an ideal spot now to create some separation. The way that they're functioning on offense now, they can create a pretty good gap. Allows their defense to play with a little more verve and confidence. A yeah, big article in the paper this morning about them stringing possessions together for consecutive touchdowns. Well, right here, they're trying to make it three in a row. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. He'll look to throw. And Matthews over the middle with a grab. The a good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And he's got this down to the 35. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. That last pass might be one he remembers, Charles. He's now over 40,000 career passing yards. And just think of the evolution of the passing game in the NFL. 40,000 at one time was unthinkable. 
No one thought anyone would ever get there. Now, how many guys have done it in the NFL? Yeah, right around 20. So we're talking a good number that have gotten that done, throwing the ball downfield. He's got a lot to be proud of and a lot more left to accomplish. Now here's a first down throw that's complete. The pass. Seven yards, the pick up there. To number 82. It's a game. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Left side caught by Matthews. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. First down, Browns. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Josh Allen in there for the sack, and it's an important one from a personal standpoint as that is sack number 100 in what has certainly been a terrific career to this point. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete, and he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. A three-yard gain on the play. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. He's going to get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So on fourth down, Kevin Stefanski trots out the field goal unit. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And they will move up by 10 now. 17 to 7. 17. Bengals 7. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive. But they stiffened when they got close to the goal line. Made him kick a field goal for the offense. Ten-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. And as this offense makes their way back out, it's AFC playoff race time as we give you a look. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Threw the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? a gain of five. Brings up second and five. At the On second down, here's Burrow. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. He and Jonathan Coachman both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. This is Hamler on the receiving end. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And Burrow going to throw again. Quick hitter here. Complete. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That's good. Throwing again, it's Burrow. And that's now four completions in a row. Good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And an incomplete pass. That'll 
Let's stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To the air again, Burrow. That's complete right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Third and two, now Burrow. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals able to get this back within a touchdown. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Now the extra point try forthcoming. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. That time a nine-play drive. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. happening on the return is he'll get this to about the 23 at their own 23 yard line and now Cleveland geared up to take the field and you're under a minute to go here in the half field position not really in your favor but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range yeah you've got the lead it's a, definitely a thought let's go ahead and try and increase it but at the same time I don't like the odds I don't like where they are in the field got the lead they've done well in the first half don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Rolling to his right. He may try and run for this. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he'll kick it away for the second time. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. The Bengals set to take over. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, it can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, they just run the clock out and go to the block room. Well, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. But well, one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Burrow's pass. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. They'll get this to Hammer over the middle, and he'll be brought down at the 45 yard line. So we've reached halftime here on New Year's Eve. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. It is the final weekend of the regular season, final day of the calendar year as well. A lot of action to update you on, so let's get right to it.
from there, it's off to Southern Nevada. Check out the action going on beside the neon lights of Las Vegas. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Chiefs. Devontae Adams, a touchdown reception. Lastly, let's get to Pittsburgh. Check on the Steelers at home at Heinz Field. And they were losers in that one to the visiting New York Giants. 30 to 24 was the final. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? Find out. We give it back to our commentator, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. A gain of 10 brings up. And again, it's Chubb. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11-yard pickup. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. First down, they'll run with Chubb into the secondary again. And finally, down at the 36-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 36. And they run the option here on first and 10. And they'll have a gain of three to the 33. Job, the Browns ball. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. He's got Hooper on the short connection. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. It's a gain of seven. It's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. play this time they double it and pick up six the last run got six now second and four six yard pickup brings up second and four out of the gun they'll look to throw looking for his running back and he's got it gonna be a pickup of only a yard and that'll make it third down the backfield 
He's taken out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. That's a good job there creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. Bengals, 14. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you have to have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, we've kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. A four receiver set here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and six. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. And a quick throw here, that's complete. That catch good for five, it's third down. Complete to number 19. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a new point there is they were able to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. They juked him. This will be a 41-yard punt, three on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and 10. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Not much there, only a yard. Brings up second and nine. Second and nine now. That's caught over the middle, Hooper. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This would be a critical call. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. 
46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. At the 27-yard line. Now Burrow to throw on second down. He'll drop this one down to mix it. Burrow's pass. It'll be a three-yard gain, and they're going to have a third down. It's a gain of three. Now third and five. Here's Burrow. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. The Bengals bring out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch signal for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and out will come the offense as they take over. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you judge mm -hmm. how big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agree with me. That's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They give the chub out of the gun, and the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Two yards the loss, second and 12. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Second and 12, operating from the 39. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. A gain of six yards. And it's now they'll throw here out of the gun. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down, and he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring Jamie himself Gillen. free. Here's Jamie Gillen now, as he's on to punt for Cleveland. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. Four-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? But it definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. So welcome back half the distance. 
Now Burrow down around his goal line. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Three yards the game there, second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. At the seven. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. That one, a first down pickup of eight. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was... And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. And Oliver racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. They're passing here. Joe Burrow to mix it on the check down. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. Give him three on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Left side caught by Diggs. And down he'll go at the 25. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. On third down, you'll give them that. You just want to make sure that you play the first down line. They were able to get him down and force the punt. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. That'll go as a punt of 42, 7 all the return. At their own 38 yards. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side, you know? And in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. That catch good for five. It's third down. A five-yard pickup on the play. And it's third down. One quarter remains here as the regular season starts to wind down. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The Browns on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This time, it's third and three. And that's caught by Smith. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. The corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. 
And he's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11-yard pickup. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. for Nick Chubb and give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Nick Chubb on the the recipe is pretty simple, I he think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, yeah don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Here's a second and seven. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's third down and seven. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He'll get three yards on the scramble there. It's second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the Bengals' 10-yard line. Now Chubb. And he'll get about four there as he takes him from the 10 down to the six. The tackle made at the six-yard line. A gain of four. And it's third down. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. He can run for it, and he will. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. And defensively, they had an extra defensive back on the field, their nickel package, and it made a difference. All the receivers were blanketed, so he tried to run for it, but he came up just a bit short. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is good. The field goal is good. And that will make this a nine-point lead. Browns 23, Bengals 14. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game. His third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first. First and 10 at their 25-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37. Burrow's pass intercepted by the Browns. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off with great anticipation. And not much on the return there. And he'll take it only up to the nine-yard line. That is the play they needed in a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. No doubt about it. They did what they had to do to give themselves a chance to get back into the game. 
They turned it over to the offense. They are now in charge. Now they need to execute. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football. If you 